Hi everyone, you're at home with Melissa, and today I'd like to share with you the organizational system that I use to keep things going with the garden and the property. Now, this is a system that works really well for me, and I think that you might like it as well. So, the first thing you need to do is get yourself a three ring binder, and as well as that, you want to get some composition paper. Now, what you're going to do with this is you're going to use it to keep track of everything dealing with your property and your garden as far as keeping things going and learning things. Basically everything. I mean, it really does work. And you want to get the composition paper that has the nice red line along the left. The reason you want to do that is because that gives you a handy place to put captions, uh, your, your titles, as to what kind of information is going to be found on the right, okay? And this avoids say putting a heading here and trying to leave exactly the right amount of space for what you want to write because what you can do it's really easy your eye goes right to it on the left you put what kind of information it is and then when you're looking for that when you want to uh, look at it later the headings are right here so you can jump from one thing to another but the headings are along the left I'll give you an example of what I mean um, say you are your day is over in terms of physical labor. You've done all you're going to do. You're tired. You can't do anything physical anymore. And you're sitting at your house and you think, okay, well, I could read or study or learn right now. Say you're watching a documentary or you are reading something in a book, you're researching, whatever you're doing, you come across something you want to learn. Okay. If that's the case in the left, just write learn. And then to the right of the red line, write what you want to learn. Okay, you can put bullet points, you can do it any way you want, but then later, when you have time that you want to learn something, that you have time to study and to memorize or whatever, you can just look for learn in that left column. And another thing you can do is you can put things that you have found on your property. Say you found a plant that you'd forgotten you'd planted, you can put that, or you can put problem on the left and to the right to say you've noticed that uh, a certain plant of yours has a disease. Like you saw, I pointed out that I have rust fungus in my mint bed. You can put problem, rust fungus, mint. You can also do a kind of scrapbooky thing with it and include photographs that you take and say print off on your computer or what have you. Uh, if you take a photograph and get it developed somewhere else, that's nice as well, but those photographs are very stiff. And so when you turn in your pages, it's going to be stiff. Whereas if you take a picture with your camera, upload it to your computer, print it off, then you've got, you can print it on regular paper and you've got a picture there that shows you what the problem is you're talking about on the right hand column. And you can reference that photograph as you're researching what to do to solve your problem. And so then, you know, you can write solution in the left hand column once you found a solution to your problem write solution write what it is you can also what I do is each day and I do this only the night before or the morning of do not work ahead I write a to-do list and the reason you don't want to work ahead and say write a list of things to do for every day in the coming week is that one if you get behind what are you gonna do you get behind one day a little bit hello tree you get behind one day a little bit and so then the following day, you're trying to catch up on the things from the day before while doing the things that you've already planned for that current day. Something comes up, you didn't get it done. Now your lists are way behind. You don't know what day to look at for what you're working on. And instead of it becoming an organizational tool, something to relieve stress, it becomes something that adds to your stress and you just go, ah, so you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that because you want this to help you, not to make you fall to pieces. So, um, the day before, what I'll do is at, in the evening usually, or in the morning of, like I said, I will write, say for example, last night I got out a piece of composition paper and in the top I wrote today's date. And the first thing I wrote on there was to do. And I did this after I checked the weather forecast for today, because then you have an idea of what's logical for you to do. You can check your work schedule, your social schedule, and everything like that, and then make your list for today. Then if there are things that you don't accomplish today from your to-do list, when you're making your list for tomorrow, 
that can be part of your current to-do list for tomorrow. You don't end up getting way behind. You plan enough for that day. And if it's a repeat of what you had on your schedule the day before, no big deal. You just do what you can. But this will help you. And I have in my left hand column, a lot of what I have is the to-do. I have learn, which is information I've found. I have ideas. And what I put in with my ideas is as I'm going through my property and I'm doing things, if I come up with an idea that I think I might want to do for a certain area, I'll put idea and I'll describe what I'm thinking of. Now this is not fully fleshed out. Maybe I haven't decided whether or not to do it yet and have to do some more thinking. As I'm reviewing my notes, I can then see that I had this particular idea and I'll reflect on that a little bit more. I might have another idea in regard to that to write down. And then once it's fully fleshed out, then it can go from being ideas to being to do's. And then next thing you know, it's done and you have what you like. This also serves in a great way being that you write down things you've observed on your property. Uh, you want to include, for example, you might, your list of observed things. You might actually use that as one of your headings and you might have peonies opened today, saw tulip blossoms today, uh, picked ripe apples today, whatever that is. Then the following year you can refer back to the previous year's notes and see what happened when so that you basically have an idea then of what's coming up. Uh, there are certain gardening shows that perhaps you might like that as they go on they do what's currently going on and with a lot of different varieties and species and tips and things like that and they do it in whatever current time it is that they're filming. You might want to refer to those, take notes on those, uh, looking at the episodes that are filmed or take place in your current month to get an idea of what they have going on at that current time. To add to yours, you might want to put that in the learned section, etc. But you've got learn, observed, to do, things like that. All of it will appear in one handy notebook, okay? And what I do is, generally speaking, I start out the season using a very thin binder just because that makes it easier to handle when it doesn't have as many pages in it. Then as it fills up, I'll move to a thicker binder generally. And then I'll keep that labeled gardening and the, and the year that it covers and then I can file that. And this won't be the kind of thing like certain journals for some of us or whatever where we keep a journal and then we just put it aside and we never look at it again and we think well maybe someone who comes after me will want to get in touch with their long past Aunt Missy by reading the things that she had written. Okay that's a perfectly good and wonderful thing but that's not what the purpose of these are. These notebooks you're keeping are living breathing things basically. They're going along with you day to day and they're helping you day to day and year to year to know what to do. You can also write in there say failed. Um, an experiment you tried. Something that you thought might be a good idea in the garden and it didn't work out well. You can write that and when you review it the following year you're reminding yourself don't do this. Just don't. <laughs> it's not going to work. Or you can write failed and write what it was. And if something failed for a particular reason, say uh, something didn't do well because there was too much rain, uh, you can write that. We had a very dry season and this needed more water and it didn't get it. And so it did poorly. You can write that, you know, just so that the next year you can see that you had a poor crop the previous year. And maybe as you're thinking, you're thinking to yourself, boy, I, I didn't get any of whatever this thing was last year. Maybe I just can't grow it in this area. Or maybe I can't grow it on my property. Or maybe that's the wrong spot. Well, if you write failed in your journal, in your composition paper, your binder, when you refer to it the following year, you go, oh, it failed, but it failed for this reason, and that's not applicable this year. So you'll know that you can safely go ahead and plant things. Also, as you're doing so, it helps you keep track. You might want to use it to help uh, keep little, say, maps to your garden where various vegetables or annuals are planted so that you can rotate your crops, meaning you can make sure not to plant something one year after another in the same place. And the reason 
that you want to do this is that it helps keep the soil healthier and more enriched. Also, if you plant the same species in the same location year after year, you run the risk of you run a greater risk of it contracting various viruses and not doing well. So you can keep track of things also to know how to rotate your crops. If you don't want to do it that way and you prefer doing it on a computer, there are programs. You know, you can do a search online. You can find programs that you can buy or organizations that you can pay a monthly membership to where you can do all of this kind of thing online. I prefer having it on paper because I just find that quicker and easier to research. Also, that I don't have to worry about what if my computer crashes and everything's lost or what if I can't afford a membership to this organization again or you know what if what if what if what if I want to use my computer for something else outdoors or my phone or what have you but I want to also be looking at this other stuff while I'm doing it well if the only place you have your information is on the instrument that you want to use for something else, you can't do both at once. So if you have it on paper, you can carry that with you whenever you want to, and it's not going to be taking up space in your computer, you're not going to be having to pay a monthly membership. And so, and to me, it's just easier. It, it, for me, personally, I find it easier to have it on paper, easier to rifle through, easier to find what I want, easier to jump from one kind of information to another. If it's all in this one place, according to date and you know you can go and just glance very quickly in the left hand column to see what kind of information you're looking at then you know you can find it really quickly as opposed to okay now I have to close this file open this file no that's not the right file close it look somewhere else it's just easier for me to find that way as well so that's my tip for you for organizing the garden and I hope that you like it I hope it helps you uh, if it does or if you're already doing something or you have uh, a system that you use that's different than anything I mentioned that you'd like to share with us, just drop a comment down in the comment section. I'd really like to hear it. And again, thank you for joining me and have a great day. Bye-bye.